Hello everyone! We're doing this again. So about last year, I made a video talking about pretty much what's in my backpack. It was a 28 minute video of me talking about absolute nonsense. And then it was a fast forward of me putting everything back in my backpack and then me walking away. And honestly, that was then me. Now me, I'm a lot more sophisticated. I'd like to give it another shot, especially with giving a little bit more detail on what I actually bring every day. Uh, granted, most of my work is actually done on my desktop and I'll probably have a separate video about that. I might have a desktop or like a setup overview at some point but currently we're going to talk about what's in my backpack, why I have each of these things. Before we even get into the backpack, go away. Bye. I of course don't carry my backpack around with me every day. I obviously haven't been to school physically in about a year at this point, which is really weird now that I think about it. That's normally why I would actually have my backpack with me, but day to day, like if I go to work or if I'm just gonna go out to pick up some food, these are the types of things they'll have with me. So I guess uh, start with what's on my wrist. I have a Samsung Galaxy Watch 3. I've had this guy for about a few months now. I recently replaced my Galaxy Watch 1. Technically it's a Galaxy Watch 2 considering the 3 was a successor. It's all very confusing. Their naming scheme has not been the best but I mean nothing's naming scheme has been the best but I replaced it because my uh, Galaxy Watch 2 as we'll say I was running fairly slowly. The battery life wasn't doing so well. Overall I was able to find a pretty good price on the 3 and uh, that's why I ended up replacing it. I love it. I especially love the leather strap as opposed to the kind of like rubbery strap that was on the watch 2 it actually used to irritate my skin a little bit I don't believe I was allergic to it I believe it was just the friction and I may or may not have worn it a little bit too tight but definitely I absolutely recommend the Galaxy Watch 3 for anyone looking towards it considering on how long I actually had the first one for I only had it for about a year before it became nearly unusable I actually even stopped wearing it on my wrist for a short amount of time before replacing it with this one I would definitely go with the watch 3. Next up is my phone. So I actually upgraded, uh, I believe the last time I showed my phone, I want to say it was a Moto Z Force. It was the first one. This is a Google Pixel 4 XL. It's the orange version because even though I actually hate the color orange, it was limited edition. So if I ever want to resell this phone, I keep it in very good condition. I can hopefully resell for a relatively high value. I've had this phone for a little over a year at this point. I think I got it last September. Nothing but good things, honestly. I know that the Google Pixel 4 XL, I also did get a pretty good price on this guy as well, but I know there was a lot of stuff regarding that this phone was a bit underwhelming, especially for the price tag and that I can't can't disagree with but when you actually use this phone despite the relative relatively outdated design with a large forehead and a relatively large chin it's a very good phone to use and because it's a first party Google phone you of course get the updates pretty much right away but yeah I've been very happy with this phone I actually did have it so the last time I showed I actually had a Moto Z Force and then I upgraded to the Razer Phone 2 I love the Razer Phone 2 that was a fantastic phone and then not long after I believe I only had the Razer Phone 2 before I was able to get a deal on the Pixel 4 XL. So I guess we'll move on to the backpack. So ooh, before I even go, backpacks kind of changed. Um, I'm really, really good at getting cheap backpacks. I really wanted to get a moss bag for the longest time, but I ended up going with a Socko bag. I think I found this thing at Walmart. The big thing that was appealing for me, the, the main cavity for storing most of the stuff uh, is actually really, really large. And uh, as we'll see, I have a 17 inch laptop and it was actually required. It was one of the only laptops I could find that could house a 17 inch laptop for less than like $40. I've had it for, God, I wanna say around a little over a year at this point. It hasn't ripped. Uh, the bag that I actually had in the last video, I think it was like a cool bell. That one broke on me. It's currently at a recycling place somewhere, I think. But yeah, this, this backpack has definitely stood the test of time, especially with me. I like rip through backpacks really hard. I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> I guess we'll go inside. So as I said prior with the main cavity on the backpack, it is very large because because I have a 17 inch laptop. I've shown this laptop in numerous occasions and I have, this is the same laptop as the one in the last backpack video, as well as the same laptop that I showed um, on the video where I talked about the best stuff to buy for school. This laptop is about 
three, I've had it for about three years, I want to say. It's a gaming laptop, as is pretty obvious. It's pretty flashy, um, although I really do like the brushed aluminum look on the front. I'm a huge fan of that. Although, as I've come to show, even though I do have really big hands, a 17-inch laptop is not super appealing for me anymore. A 15-inch is much more appealing, and I am hoping on replacing this, or actually my current laptop setup. I'll get to that a little more in a little bit. This laptop has an i7, 7700HQ. It's a four core, eighth thread CPU with a 2.8 gigahertz base clock and a 3.8 turbo when you plug in the laptop into the wall. It has 16 gigabytes of 2400 speed sodium. I actually replaced the original, I think this had a one terabyte hard drive that came with it. Um, I replaced it with a one terabyte solid state drive. I don't remember exactly which one. It was probably like an 860 Evo, I wanna say. It also so as a GTX 1050. So not the fastest laptop anymore. It's actually a little disappointing to know that uh, an i7 7700, even 7700K is pretty slow in comparison um, with, you can get a four core eight thread CPU. Uh, you can get like a Ryzen 3 for a little under $200. So it's a little disappointing to see that this laptop has fallen so far in just a couple years which also does kind of contribute to the whole reason why I want to go with a new laptop setup. Next up, I have a Surface 3. Once again, the same one that I had before. You're probably wondering, yo, why do you have essentially two laptops? Well, I really, really, really like two-in-one laptops. And I made that really clear once again in the video where I talk about the do's and don'ts of college tech. Two-in-one laptops are absolutely the way to go. I really hate using pen and paper. I find it incredibly antiquated. And um, having something like this, where I can use it essentially as a digital notebook is a freaking godsend. As a matter of fact, in the front pouch here, it's kind of falling apart, but I do have a Windows incompatible pen, which is compatible with the Surface 3. Although once again, this one has also fallen from grace. I want to say I've had this guy for around two years or so. Can't exactly pinpoint the date on that but this thing has been fantastic and it's definitely stood the test of time. I was able to get this at a very, very, very steep discount. When I initially bought this, the screen was broken and I was hoping I could fix it only to find out that when I called Microsoft and asked them exactly what this device was, I don't remember exactly why I called them, but they told me that it still had the business warranty on it. So I'm assuming that the this device came from a business and business warranties tend to last longer than standard consumer warranties. So I was actually able to get a brand new one for free, which was super cool. Despite that, it's not a very powerful machine. It has an Intel Atom X7 Z8 700. It's a four core, four thread, a 1.6 base, and a 2.4 turbo. And it also has four gigabytes of RAM. So yeah, all in all, really not the best machine for doing anything other than uh, writing notes in OneNote, but I've had it since I began college. So actually now I'm thinking more like two and a half, maybe three years. So it's a very good little machine. That being said, now that I have both the laptops out of the way, um, I am on. I am planning on replacing, of course, both of them with either a two-in-one folding laptop, just because I find a lot more utility in having one laptop instead of having well, two. Also been trying to maybe find a relatively inexpensive iPad Pro to replace both of them, because as you guys know me, I'm not a big Apple fan. I don't really have anything Apple. I was thinking about getting an iPad, especially for development. The iPad interface is actually very usable, and I actually don't really need a full desktop operating system when I'm on the go, as most of my work is done on my desktop anyway. So I am actually planning on replacing both of these devices, either with a two-in-one laptop or with an iPad. Next up, I guess I'll just kind of empty this cavity. I have a multimeter. It's a Fluke 77 Series 2. I actually did have a Fluke 70, or I'm sorry, an 87, but it died. And I'm actually trying to use the 77 to fix the 87 because I like the 87 a lot more. But most of the time when I'm using this, I'm checking the uh, voltage on batteries to see if it, how much capacity it has left, as well as checking continuity on various components. Honestly, if you know how to use a multimeter, it is very helpful. Please go and buy one, unless you don't need it. Stop laughing at me. I also have a TI-84. This is also mainly because of school. Honestly, these calculators are a lot more helpful than just taking you through your pre-calculus class. Although you can, of course, do everything you can on this guy with a phone, but having the real thing is helpful in a lot of cases. And it's pink because why not? I like the color pink. All right, don't judge me. Pink's a good color. My dude, hey, come over here. Let me, give me a fist bump, my guy. <laughs> Next, I have a 
Toolkit by Tooks, I think, T-O-O-X. I have no idea. I genuinely couldn't care less. I do have an iFixit kit, which I actually keep at home in my desk, but I pretty much have this guy. I received this guy as a gift. Uh, this is pretty much my travel kit. It's a couple bits short of the iFixit kit. Other than that, it actually shares a lot of the same tools as the iFixit kit and even a couple more, uh, despite being a relatively cheap toolbox. I want to say this guy was about $20 to $30 even though the iFixit kit is about 60. If you do want a toolkit, but you don't want to pay $60 for one, you can get a relatively good one for like 20 to 30. I would highly recommend this one. And if I do find on Amazon, I will throw the link below. All right, moving on, headphones. So I have shown these before, I believe on like the top five underrated tech products. That was an awful video, don't watch that. But um, I did also show this in the do's and don'ts of college. These things are fantastic. These are the Sony, the Mark III's. Uh, these are like the one XM1000 Mark III or whatever. I don't know the exact number for uh, the exact model number for it, but these headphones are fantastic. I know they, these were superseded by the Mark IVs, but honestly, you can get these at a pretty good price for right now. I was able to get mine at a pretty good price as well. I've had these for almost two years at this point, and they have not failed me. I use them a lot for streaming. By the way, that's Extinguish My Felicity on Twitch. And uh, also follow me on Twitter and Instagram while you're at it, Slip is Null. If you ever want updates on those videos or you want to come and follow me stream but these headphones highly recommended you can never go wrong with a good pair of headphones in my opinion i have a couple more cables in here pretty much to go along with everything that i have i have the charger for my surface 3 it's just the official power brick i believe the official cable for this thing broke on me so i got a new one it's a micro usb cable unfortunately but i mean usb c wasn't really a thing when the it might have been i don't actually remember when the surface 3 came out but it wasn't exactly popular when it came out so it does use micro usb which is kind of stinky but it is what it is and i have a mini usb b to usb a for my ti 84 this is to charge it and also if you want to take programs from a computer and install them on the calculator, you can do it that way. So a good battery bank is honestly pretty, it's a pretty decent choice. I believe this is a 20,000 milliamp hour battery bank from Mophie. I've had this guy for around a year. It actually has USB-C fast charging and USB-A for fast charging as well. What's cool about this is it actually is both ways. So it does USB-C for charging and also for charging other devices. This thing at 20,000 milliamp hours is especially helpful. This thing has saved me from having a dead phone multiple, multiple times. I know in my last video about backpack, I'm gonna be referring to that a lot. Probably should have said that earlier. There was another much larger battery pack that I carried around so big in fact that it actually had an outlet on it that battery pack I actually now keep in my car for jumping my battery it does get pretty cold up here it's good to have something that you can use to drop your car and I have used it multiple times and it has saved my ass I got a lot of things but yeah that's why I ended up going with a smaller more compact a battery pack very helpful indeed I believe the main cavity for putting stuff in is pretty much empty so we'll move up to this small pack I have over here I have a deck of uno cards <laughs> because I like Uno. I am a big fan of Uno. And if you're not, if you don't know what Uno is, then you should get Uno because Uno is fun. Don't get Dose because if you, if I, before you get Dose, like if you play Uno and you're like, man, I want to get into Dose, I want you to find a video on the, the rules of Dose. It's terrible and it makes me want to die. Phone charger in the pouch, pretty much self-explanatory. Not much to say there. It's a C2C cable, which is helpful. A lighter because I like lighting things on fire. I like fire and knives, I'm sorry. Speaking of fire and knives, I think I have a knife in here too. I do have a knife in here. This thing is sick. I use this mainly for opening boxes. It's very helpful to have a knife on, on you at all times. This is a fixed blade. It's not a folding blade. I would like to get a folding blade because unfortunately um, having a fixed blade where I live is illegal. So I do usually tend to keep this at home, but I do bring it over if I need to op uh, open a box or anything. And um, it's just helpful all around to have a knife on you. This is a five inch blade. It's like basically I could like disembowel someone with this. Knives are fun. I even have a sheath for it. Pretty epic. 
I have the Google Pixel Buds. I also have, of course, headphones, but Google Pixel Buds, these are really awesome for like working out. They sound really good and they fit in my ear, my ears especially, a lot better than I normally would have expected. They use a USB-C charger, so I don't have to carry an extra charger from my phone. All around, I have had these for a couple months now. These are really awesome. And of course, I got the orange earbuds to match my phone, even though I actually have a pink case on my phone. I hate the color orange so it's basically just uh i hate myself a lot so but google pixel buds if you have been looking at them these are really awesome earbuds to get they connect automatically to google pixel phones so if you have a pixel definitely get these buds they are top tier i have these two side pouches but i only have something in one of them i have uh, an extra wired mouse because i do take a laptop with me so if i ever do need you know kind of like a cheap mouse to well use a mouse i have one here i haven't used this thing in quite a while though because uh um, after using my Razer Viper, I like really, really don't like using this mouse, but this is kind of like an emergency situation. If I do need a mouse, I have one. That's pretty cool as well. We're getting towards the end here. In this front patch here, I have my laptop charger. This thing is massive, is another reason why I don't actually like having a 17 inch laptop. Uh, or a gaming laptop for that matter. I actually had to replace it because the first one broke and the replacement was $140 for this thing. Having something smaller or even an iPad is going to be a much easier time for me and I'll have a lot more space in my backpack should I wanna put anything else in it. And as far as I know, that's it. I have a lot of stuff in my bag. It's not too much different from the last video that I made about the bag stuff, but hopefully this video won't be a half an hour long. Thank you all for watching. Ooh, I also wanna say thank you for a thousand subs. I said that in another video, but this video, despite being filmed after the other video, will actually go out first. My life is complicated. Also, it's a mess. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great day. Once again, make sure to subscribe. I'm at a thousand subscribers. That light just went off. That's my cue to leave. Subscribe to my channel. Follow me, Slip is Null, on Instagram. Instagram and Twitter and follow me, Extinguish My Felicity on Twitch. Okay, bye.